We welcome him back. Hey, are you, Andy Raymond, unfiltered, my friend? Thank you for joining us again. Martin Devlin for Prime Minister, Thank you. representing the Platform Party. Jacinta knows what's coming to her. She has avoided the embarrassment of the Platform Party with M. Devlin winning in a landslide. I can see the headlines Thank now. You. And look, I tell you what, you know, and it's not such a stupid thing to suggest. I always said that after having somebody with a vagina in Parliament, you might as well have another one with a vagina. So I'm putting my hand up. There you go. So you, you'll get a start, you've got a prerequisite? <laughs> well, I'm a half a man, like we're all half a man these days, aren't we? I mean, what's happened to us, mate? I mean, we've been shoved in the corner, uh, we've no. been told that we don't belong, we've been told we're cancelled, we're told we're OK, boomer, all of that kind of stuff. It's about time we've re reclaimed what's between our legs, isn't it, Andy? I am full man today. I am 100% man today for my appearance on the platform. And I say that with my chest out, my chin high and a world of confidence. But it's only because the missus isn't here. Of course, mate. We all do that. Tennis, how much of it are you watching? Not much. Uh, and it seems I'm in the majority. It's um, the, the, Look, the, the tennis that I have watched, the actual tennis, has been terrific. And, and they're wonderful athletes. They're boring, but they're wonderful athletes, and uh, and what they do on a tennis court is absolutely amazing. But for me, mate, tennis, even with everyone available, is lacking the characters and lacking the personality. And as soon as someone shows a bit of character or personality, we cut them down to size. Our good mate uh, Nick Kyrgios, but you know, no Federer there, Rafa's out, um, no Ash Barty. It's the who cares open for me. It really is, which is sad. I, I have watched half an hour on a couple of occasions, you know, waiting for the cricket to start, basically. Okay. Yeah, that's, look, that's fair. We talked to our mate Dave Rusey out of Melbourne a little earlier, and I said that to him. I mean, you've got a quarter final today. Just let me just check the names. It's Shelton and, Shelton and uh, Paul are two unseated American players. I mean, no disrespect to either of these lads, but... I mean, this is what tennis no. has done to itself. But it's not just tennis. This is what rugby's done to itself. This is what, well, at least rugby league, I'll give, I'll give rugby league credit, it's still got some personalities. But we have vanillaed and whitewashed and homogenised so many sports, haven't we? Yep. And mate, we've discussed this before. It's, it started back with the motor racing. Uh, Peter Brock, I can remember very, very fondly uh, as, a, as a young uh, commentator starting out. I had the opportunity to interview Peter a number of times. And he was one of the boys before the camera went on. When the camera went on, he smiled and he said all the right things. The supercar drivers, the F1 drivers, the rally drivers, the NASCAR drivers, it doesn't matter what motorsport you are in. They are so well or so thoroughly media trained. It, it, it's actually bland. Yeah. It's, it's repetitive. Yeah. Yeah. They're on autopilot. And look, they've got to do that to, to make the sponsorship buck for the, the average fan or the casual fan looking to get excited about a motor race, there's nothing as far as, you know, promotion that, uh, you know, where, where one driver says, mate, if, if you put your front wheel next to mine, I'm going to turn around and put you into the, into the fence. You know, that's what they used to do in the good old days. Not anymore. BBL is boring as well. I hate to say it, but it has. I mean, talk about what they've done with the BBL is what we've done here with the Sevens. It used to be a laugh. It used to be a blast. It used to be a bit of must, must watch telly. And then all the you know the marketers came along. They got all greedy. They did double rounds. The crowds uh, dropped off dramatically. And now you look at it, I just think it's had so what? There's so much cricket going on in the world. It just, it just doesn't stand out anymore. No. There's so much of it. it, it it's a, To me, and I'm a huge combat sports fan, uh, but I fell off the UFC wagon a decade ago when I could have the choice to watch Sunday or maybe I'll watch next Wednesday or I might watch next Saturday, but the card after that on Wednesday is, is even better. So I'll watch that one. They've flooded the market with the UFC, and as a result, uh, for a while, their UFC stocks and UFC interest was down. They've flooded the market with BBL cricket. There's 60 something games, there's just too, yeah, many, too games. many games. But he, he, mate, here's the kicker we start the season with Chris Lynn and all these superstars who are now 
gone to play overseas yep, in the Sixers yep. competition. Yep. We introduce our test stars and there's been a huge wave and surge of popularity over the last week with David Warner and Steve Smith, Nathan Lyon, Alex Carey and the like all coming back. Steve Smith's not going to play in the finals, deep into the finals, <laughs> if, oh, no. um, if, if his mob make it. I mean, just ridiculous. In the new television uh, agreement, I believe, with, uh, with Cricket Australia, they're streamlining the BBL for future seasons. They're, they're dropping about 30% of games, so there'll be 40-odd-ish games, and, uh, and hopefully they're able to make that fit into not only the domestic but the global calendar. You can't have players starting a season disappearing halfway through or just making cameos in the middle you, you start round one you see out the final if you make the final then you go on to your next job now see this sounds like super rugby this is what happens with super rugby here the all blacks aren't allowed to come back and play for the first few rounds and then when they do come yeah. back and play they've got restricted minutes and then they get tired and they need sabbaticals and they don't play at all and meanwhile you know we've got a diluted product the, the superstars aren't there and you know people are wondering oh why aren't people watching why aren't they engaged anymore why aren't they interested that's because you're not mate you're feeding us a C yeah, grade C third division product is what you're feeding us. Exactly right. And New Zealand rugby, what they've done with the restrictions, uh, you know, over the last couple of years has been absolutely disgraceful. It really has from a promotional perspective, from a growth perspective, because the fact is, mate, there is so much entertainment in the world in 2023 we need the very best of the very so, best playing week in, week out, yeah. irrespective of what sport it is, to grow. The kids want to watch the All Blacks doing their thing, playing provincial footy. The kids want to watch Steve Smith and David Warner doing their thing for the local side. And if they're not there, they're turning off their television. So, yeah. And look, it's the dumbest thing that New Zealand... Well, they've done so many dumb things, but this year, uh, putting, the, the, you know, the, the crowd favourite Black Ferns into the seven side for one tournament here on our shores. They won that tournament on the weekend and it's never coming back here to New Zealand. But when it comes to Super Rugby Opiki in the women's domestic competition, they're not going to be here. So when the young girls go, I want to go see Portia play. Well, she's not here. I want to go see Ruby. No, she's not here. I want to go see her. No, 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 not here. Stacey, no, 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 not here. Yeah, but those are the ones who won the World Cup. Yeah, but they're not here. They're overseas now. I mean, it's just, I mean, yeah, marketing 101, you morons. Yeah. yeah. All right, what is that? that? Andy, what are the most popular... To watch his superstars. What are the most popular sports and, and who are the most popular sports people in Aussie at the moment? Off the top of your head. Uh, off the top of my head, I'll say Steve Smith, who's scored two centuries and a 66 in his last three innings. He is white hot at the moment. I would love to have uh, stocks in Steve Smith at the moment. It, it, just ridiculous. Every second story is, whether it's newspaper, radio, is on Steve Smith or based around Steve Smith. He is off the charts. Slowly, very slowly, we're seeing um, the rugby league chatter already ramp back up but sadly a lot of it has got to do with this um, collective bargaining agreement that the players and the rugby league players association uh, have, have claimed they've been robbed of now these stories for me mate they're just boring i, I don't care about mm, the off so, field yeah. issues but but there is look there is an issue there there is an issue and it needs to be addressed what they're, uh, as of this morning, and mate, I've spoken to a coach this morning and I've spoken to two players in preparation for this interview. They're having a very serious think about boycotting the trials and that's them saying to the NRL, up yours. Yeah, amazing. They're not going to boycott the season as such. They're not going to boycott the season. So once round one starts, the players are smart enough to realise that you know they've got to be there. But the trial matches, they, they don't mean anything. And if, and, and if no one has any trial matches, everyone's in the same boat. You, you're getting your rust out in weeks one, two and three. I wouldn't be surprised if this pre-season competition that they've proposed doesn't go ahead. 
A couple of things before we leave you, mate. A, are you Andy Raymond unfiltered with us as always? Look, I, we went to the Warriors' first press conference of, of the year last Thursday. Now, I don't want to go early, yep. mate, and you know that I'm not prone to exaggeration. Oh, I don't no, want to blow a going balloon to. up that's going to get pricked later on in the season, mate, but I'm just telling you um, what me and Lachlan saw out there. I'm just saying, okay? That team, Andy, don't, yeah. you, uh, don't you write us off this year. I'm not writing the Warriors off, but I tell you what, there'd be some very nervous Warriors stakeholders listening to you start tipping them. <laughs> I've heard stories about you on the horses, <laughs> but you, you you couldn't tip sand out of a bucket. I couldn't, mate. I'm hopeless, mate. I'm absolutely useless. And I also put the micro, I put the cursor. Let's finish with a couple of things here. Um, I always thought the biggest dickhead in Australian sport was Nick Kyrgios till I met Michael Clark, mate. What is wrong with this guy? He's a tool. Yeah, you, you've, you've got it right. Um, and, you know, he's probably vying for the crown with the great Nick Kyrgios. But when you, when you strip it down, what he does with himself and where he wants to... That's know, his business. That's, everything, yeah. that's, that's his business. He's, he's got... He's got caught out, and, and bad luck to you, mate. You know, you, you should have thought about that earlier. But, but the general consensus on Michael Clark is he's an arrogant bullfed. Yeah. And he, he actually, he's tried to defuse a public situation that was caught on a private phone, but because, because he's seen as a dick... Um, People are laughing at him and people are blaming him. He's, he's actually tried to defuse a situation in where the young lady, who is obviously emotion charged, has gone berserk. That, that doesn't excuse the fact that he's a, he's a goose and uh, he's just proven it again. Hey, are you Andy Raymond Unfiltered? What have we got this week? Mate, Travis Norton, the former Bulldog and Cowboy, drops his dream team. We've got a great collection of interviews with the Premiership winner, Michael Morgan. And this weekend, we are catching up, and it drops on Saturday with the great Andrew Eddinghausen. Oh, I love this guy. I love this guy. Absolute beauty, mate. One that can't be missed. And you can catch the podcast anywhere you get your podcast. Just search Andy Raymond Unfiltered. E.T. Thank you so much for that, A.R.U. That's Andy Raymond Unfiltered.